In today's show, we're going to learn about collections and power apps. Collections are a special type of power apps variables that allow you to kind of work with the whole data instead of just individual pieces of information. I think they're pretty handy, so I thought we'd learn about them. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And today's show is all about the collections variable in Power Apps. It's unlike the other ones where we're used to saying one piece of information and kind of retrieving that, whether it's in context or globally, this particular variable lets us do a table of information so we can store bigger things. You know, you might put a shopping cart out of it, you might collect a whole bunch of data to let users kind of prune through it before you submit it, send it off on email. Collections open up the uh, ability for you guys to kind of create a bunch of different solutions. So what I want to do in this video is just kind of start with the basics. How do you use them? How do they work? So then in subsequent videos, we can do some more complex stuff. If the other types of variables are what you're after, don't worry, look down below, right? There are links to uh, the other video I made that covers global and uh, contextual variables. But this one's going to be about collections. So let's just switch over to my desktop. And so powerapps.com, right? I'm going to sign in. And so then after a few seconds there, we're going to click on apps and then we will say create an app. All right, and so for the collections, we're not going to work with any data or any connections in this video, so we're going to just use a blank app, and we'll make it the tablet layout, so it gives us a little more space. All right, after about five seconds, that popped right up there, so we're going to skip over the tutorial, so you should watch it at some point if you haven't. Or not watch it, but kind of go through the process. Anyway, you know what I mean. And so let's build out and work with collections. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert, we're going to stick some labels on here. So we'll insert a couple labels, Right, we're going to collect some data to put in there. And so this first one we'll call name, right? It's going to be real complicated stuff. And then this one we're going to do phone number. And then actually we'll make a third label here because that will help us in the further example. And we'll call this uh, comments. Okay, so there's those labels. Now remember it's a good practice to go over here and label your labels, ha <laughs> Right, so this one should say label name, label phone number, label comments. We're not going to go through all that, but kind of keep that in mind if you're building this, that's a good idea. So the next thing I want to do is collect information. So we're going to do text and text input. And I'm going to do three of these also. One, two, three, just like so. Boom. We'll grab this guy. And so we'll put it right there. We'll grab this one here and put it right there. And we'll put this one right here. And then I also always kind of run in here real quick and get rid of all this default text. It's great that it's there because when you look at it for the first time, you don't know what to do, but we know what to do, so we don't need any default text. So I got rid of default text, and I am going to label these. So I'm going to call this, um, we'll do I underscore, right? So name, and then for this one, we'll do I underscore phone. And you'll probably get the reason why in just a few minutes when we do the hard part. And I notes. Cool, cool. And then of course in a second we're gonna need a button to do some stuff. So we'll put a button here. Um, and so with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this button add the data to our collection. All right? So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna say add to collection. Oh, we need to make our button a little bigger. <laughs> nice big button, right? We like we get fat fingers, so we won't be able to make that easy. Alright, so we've got a button, and so here we go. To use um, a collection, all you have to do is start using it, right? You don't have to define it somewhere else. You don't have to set it up ahead of time. All you have to do is pass some data, give it a name, and make a collection. And so to do that, what you do is we're, for our button, we're going to go to the onSelect property, and we're going to type in the function collect. And so as you can see, collect adds one or more items to the specified collection. Cool. So we'll hit enter there, and so collect. So now this is where you get to name your collection. So we'll call this contact info, because I'm not very creative. Do a comma, and then now we're going to do our little curly braces. And so here what you're going to do is for each column that you want to have, so like we want to have a name column, I'm going to name the co name column name, so name colon. Right, so that says create a column named name, and then colon says set its value to and in this example, we're going to set it to what? We're going to do it to I underscore name. And then you want to do dot text, right? Because we don't want the uh, field in there. We want the value that's been typed in the field in there, right? So that's going to create a column called name. And whatever we put in the text box for name is going to be in there. So then we'll do a comma. We'll do another same type of thing. We'll do phone. 
colon. And then for phone, we're going to put in I, oh, I underscore phone. It helped I typed it correctly. And then dot text. Just like that, use a little tab complete to avoid clicking. And then finally, for comments, we'll do comments. And then same type of deal. I underscore, oh, I underscore, I called it notes for whatever reason, because I'm crazy. And then dot text, but that's all right. That's the nice thing about labeling it, was I labeled it so I was able to reference what did I really mean, because I, instead of it saying label one, label two, label three. All right. So then we'll put a, uh, that guy to close up. So that's to find all of our information. And then we'll do uh, print to close it out. And let's try it out. So if we go over here, we'll hit play, right? A little preview button. So we'll type in Shane and then my phone number. So you can all call me and tell me how awesome I am. Eight, eight, and awesome. And then we'll click add to collection. All right, so nothing happened. But I mean, it did, right? Behind the scenes, it added all that information to the collection. We just didn't have a way to manifest or show that. But we'll, so the first way we can check it is we'll close our preview. And so if you go to the View button and then click Collections, you can see that it will show you your collection of the first five pieces of information. And so you can see, Comments is awesome, Name is Shane, Phone is my number. So it worked. All right, so we know how to put something in a collection. And if we were to hit Play again, Right, and so now we'll say uh, my dog's name. So we'll say Chewy, and he smells. We'll say add to collection. We don't have any indication that it actually worked, but we know I clicked the button and it worked, right? You guys have faith I clicked, so we'll hit X. So in order to better look at your uh, data, right, what you probably want to do is you probably want to use a gallery. So we're going to say insert a gallery, and for us, we'll do a vertical one. All right, it kind of added to the page right on top of things. Power Apps has a bad habit of that. And so then now what are we gonna do? All right, so for data source, hit the drop down here, and there's your collection. So contact info shows up. Very cool. You can choose a custom layout. So we don't have an image or anything. We're just gonna do a title and a subtitle. Great, and then for title, we'll set that to be the person's name. And for subtitle, we will do a phone number. We'll close that so it gets out of the way. And so now if we do preview, you can see that Shane and Chewy's records have shown up. If we add another one for uh, my wife, right? Um, better, better not get ourselves in trouble, right? It's very pretty. We don't wanna, don't wanna get in trouble. It's close to Valentine's Day. We'll say add to collection. And so it puts uh, her information in there as well, right? This is very core. This is how collections work, right? If you've gotten this far, you now have data in a collection, and then you can use it for different, re, uh, different purposes. And so now let's take a look at how we might manipulate that a little bit, right? Maybe let's make the next thing, let's figure out how to get rid of the collection. Good idea. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab this button, highlight it, I'm gonna say Control C, and then Control V, so that copied the button. We'll move it down, I'll put it over here. Oh, these buttons are too big. Yeah, you guys better do a better job of designing your solutions than I do. Mine are ugly, but mine are dysfunctional, right? You guys need to write stuff that your users have a nice user experience, so don't let me down. So we'll change this one to clear the collection. Clear collection. Okay? And so then now on the on select for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to look at clear. So the clear function... Uh, just clears out the whole collection. So if we put in, and you can see it's suggested contact info for us. So just like that, that's all we gotta do, clear contact info. If we hit preview, so now if I hit clear collection, bye-bye, data's gone, right? So we'll add Nicola back. And when you're working with this stuff, it's always better to have at least one thing in there so you can kind of see and touch it. Um, if you don't, I'm also pretty, we can leave that. Then it makes it a little weirder for you working with it. So always leave yourself some data in there as you're uh, learning and testing, okay? So that was clear, uh, clear. Now you also probably noticed, we'll delete this and we'll put it back, but there's also a uh, command there, a function called clear collect. So clear collect, what that does, will clear out the collection and then start putting data back in there. Um, I don't use that one very often, but the idea is it's just trying to cut it down. So if you know you like want to wipe it out and start replacing with data right away and you want to do it in one step, clear collect uh, can do that. I don't use it very often, I just do a clear 
And then if I need to, you know, I have a collect button like I have there. All right, so we'll hit escape. So it puts my correct clear contact info. Okay, so that was how you clear out your whole collection. But what if you just want to get rid of one item in your collection? Good question. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to go over here to our uh, card, right? And so we're in our gallery and we're going to say insert um, an icon and we'll insert the trash can. Boom. See, this is why it's nice to have some data. I kind of see where it goes and how it fits in. So we're going to grab this guy and we're going to put it about right here. Probably should make it a little smaller so it kind of fits the style. Um, it's not exactly centered, but you get the idea. Okay, and so what we're going to do for this particular trash can now is we're going to say on select. We're not going to select the parent. What we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of one of the cool things about a gallery, and that's called this item. So if we type in this item, that represents the current line, right? So when I'm on the trash can that I have highlighted there, it's representing the Nicola item. If I go down and click on the trash can below that, that'd be representing the Shane item. So we're going to say, all right, this item, so that's how we would represent it. But what we want to do is we want to use the remove function. So remove, um, and then you say what collection, right? So let's, let's start over here. So we'll do remove. And so when we click remove, you can see it's asking, all right, what collection would you like to remove stuff from? Well, contact info. And then what item? And so the way we specify the item is this item. So we do just like that. Bammo, whammo. So let's preview now. So now we've got this cute little trash can. And so if I click on Shane, he's gone, right? If I click on Nicola, she's gone. So it's an ability for me to work with um, individual items, right? I'll put four or five in there. So I'm going to get rid of just that one and just that one, that one. Now I want to get rid of the whole thing. So that's a great way for you guys when you want to give the users the ability to delete something in a collection, right? One of the places this came up in the forums recently was uh, somebody wanted to upload a bunch of photos and then let the user go in and pick which ones they wanted to remove my little trash can icon, what is the answer to that question? All right? Okay, so now we know how to get stuff in there. We know how to get stuff out of there. So now how could we work with this stuff? So the last thing I want to kind of explore here for a minute is let's say that now once we put it in here, well, we notice that we can't see the comments, for example, right? We want to have a more detailed view of this. And so you might do that on a separate screen. We're just going to do it down at the bottom. So for right now, we're going to grab a label. We'll put it down here and we'll say, um, item details and then we'll go to the home screen here we'll make it nice and big right so we know that's important yeah we'll make it bold and then we'll grab it and we'll kind of pull this over here okay so item details and so then down here at the bottom what we're going to do is we're going to insert um, a label so we'll grab this label you know if I was really smart I'd probably just let's do that let's show what we should do smartly I'm going to go up here and grab this label and we're going to say control copy or control C, and then we're going to go down here, press control V, and so then now I got name. Okay, so there's name, and then I'm going to insert a text input. I'm going to drag this down here, boom. Okay, and so in text input, for default, we don't want text input, obviously, but what we need to do is we need to specify the current item that they've clicked on. So to do that, you're going to specify the name of your gallery, so gallery one. And then for gallery one, there is a special property called selected. So that is the one they've last selected, selected, and then we will show the name of what is selected. Okay? So you can already see Shane down there. So let's go preview that real quick. So we'll say preview. Let's add um, another one for Nicola. And so when I click on this little arrow, it's going to make Nicola the selected one. Now it's going to make Shane the selected one. So it's changing the data that we see down here based on to show which one has, was last selected here. And that's going to work even across screen. So if we had made this button, uh, what we could have done, so if you look at this little button right here, right? So it selects the parent, and then we could make this next step, right? Navigate, and then navigate to screen two if we had screen two and show the information over there, right? That's how a lot of the default apps work. But for right now, we don't need any doing that because we're just happy with oh, selecting the parent. There we go. So then, right, what we do, we just re repeat here. So I'm going to select both of these. We're going to uh, hit Control C again. We're going to hit Control V again. We'll drag these two guys down here. And so then we'll put um, text input here. 
And then so for this text input, the default value is going to be the same thing again, almost, right? So gallery one dot selected dot phone. So just like that, we've got the phone number, right? This looks hideous. I, I'm, I can't even leave it. I got to fix it. Put this here, drag you there. Okay, that's better. And then one more text input here. Drag this guy down here and maybe we'll make this one a little bigger. Ooh. All right, and so then what's the value here? You should know this by now, right? It's gallery one dot selected dot comments. Boom, Shane is very pretty. It's written, it must be true because anything on the internet is true. You guys know that. All right, so that's pretty exciting stuff right there, right? Now, one of the things you might want to do though, so right now it's a little awkward from a standpoint, right? When I select this, so it updated Nicola, I can go down here and I can type, right? But there's no way for me to save that back. And it's a little, it can be a little off-putting for users, right? If I switch back to Shane and then switch back to Nicola, oh, let's go back up here. Well, when Power Apps isn't being annoying, the data hasn't actually changed, right? It's, add somebody else to the collection, click on that person. Um, I, I don't know why it's being annoying. The data didn't change in the collection, right? Maybe the easier way to prove that to you, just so you don't think I'm crazy because PowerShell's being crazy at the moment. Go to collections, you can see that the values are all still what we typed in here. I don't know why this is not updating. Why aren't you updating? Who knows? Um, anyway, what you might want to do is you might want to take these three fields and maybe we don't want to let users edit them by default. So what we might do is select all three of these, boom, boom, boom. And then we're going to go to the home screen and we're going to say group and we're going to group those three. So now they're in a group. And then what we can do is we can have a property. So we can go over here to group. Um, we have the group selected. And then we're going to go into display mode. And you can see by default the display mode for the group is edit. Well, if you back up edit and you change that to view, then what happens? Well, A, we're going to clear a collection because it's driving me bonkers. Um, so Nicola, chain. But now if you look down here, I can't type in here. I can't edit these fields because I set the display mode for those fields to be uh, disabled. So then, but now you're like, well, what if they wanted to edit them? Good, good question. So let's do uh, that. Let's clear this up out of the way a little bit. Let's add ourselves another icon. We'll get a little edit icon. We'll bring him down here. All right, and so then maybe on the edit one, what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, what are we going to do? We'll set we'll set a variable. So let's do um, set, and then for the variable is edit, and then we'll set the value to true, just like that. Okay, so if they click that, edit becomes true. And then what you would do is you'd go back to your display mode here. And so instead of display mode view, we'd have an if statement, right? We'd say, let's delete out that. We'll say if um, edit equals true, right? So if edit equals true, oh, then what will we do? We will um, set the display mode to edit. If it's not true, then we'll set the display mode to view. We'll close that out. So just something like that. And so when we hit play. And so then now if we click this, the edit icon, it then makes these uh, editable. Now you'd want to do a little bit better job, right? We'd actually want this button to be a toggle maybe, or we don't want to have a button that said, you know, turn off edit mode or something like that. Um, but hopefully that conceptually gives you the, the right idea, right? I don't want to go through all of that because there's one more thing I want to teach you that's a little more important. And so the last thing I need to teach you is that, well, what if they took advantage of our edit button and they wanted to change Nicola's name? That's a great question. Well, after they're done, we need to save the edits. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll create a, just a simple button, right? It could be an icon and be a button, whatever you want. Probably should have been an icon. Um, but so we'll change this to be the save button. And so on the save button, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the last uh, function I want to show you, and that is called patch. 
And so a patch, patch applies the updates to the specified row and changes it in the data source. So if we say patch, and so what is our data source? It's contact info. What record do we want to update? Well, we want to update um, the gallery selected, right? So gallery one dot selected, just like that. And then uh, what type of update do we want to make? And so what we'll do is we'll set the uh, the name again to, and then whatever this field is. So, oh, I should not have clicked away. But so this is where the fact that I didn't label this is not good. So we'll do um, input name two here. And we'll make this one input name, or not name, uh, phone two. These are terrible names, by the way. But I'm not trying to make a good app. I'm just trying to make uh, teach you the concepts of how to work on this, right? So now we'll hit save. Okay, so name. And so what is name is going to be uh, input underscore name two dot text again. And then we'll do that. And then we'll say uh, set so was name. And then we had phone is going to be i underscore phone two dot text like that. And then finally, we're going to have a name phone and I believe it was comments. And so for comments, it will be i underscore comments two dot text like so. Boom and boom. Okay. So then now if we're over here, right, we've got Nicola set, but we'll say Nicola edited. Right, so we changed your name. And so then when we hit save, you can see that it updated the value in the gallery, right? Same thing, Shane up here. We'll change my phone number to the local pizza, num pizza joints phone number. Boom, boom, boom. Say save. So then using patch, we're able to edit the data, right? And patch works on your other data sources. We'll probably talk about that more in future videos. But that's how it works with uh, collections. So if we close out of that, I think that gets us through everything I wanted to kind of go over with you, right? So now you know how to create a collection. You know how to delete all the collection. You know how to delete an individual item out of the collection. And you know how to edit um, items in the collection. So hopefully that covers everything you need to know and helps you out. Um, as always, if you have any comments, feedback on the video, you want to make fun of me for making an ugly form, I deserve it. Uh, leave all that down below and uh, let me know. Or if not, you know, reach out to me on Twitter or other places. These type of videos come from questions on Twitter and uh, through Bold Zebras. And then, of course, when people hit me up on the uh, Power Apps forum. So leave me comments there and we'll make you other videos. All right. Well, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. Just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the old subscribe button over here. That always helps me out. Or if you want to work together, you can always hit me up through the Bold Zebras. Or if really what you want is some more of these Power App videos, which is probably what you want, then the playlist is somewhere on the screen here. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.